Hey everyone, Pratiti Pathak here. Welcome to Unpacking Brain Drama, where we talk about real life experiences, the challenges and the obstacles. Sometimes we use them to block ourselves. Sometimes we use them to grow and evolve. Here's what I want to say. Obstacles are not the things blocking our path. Obstacles are the path. So in other words, we have to grow through what we go through. So join me as we have some amazing conversations with some amazing guests. Let's go. What's up, Wednesday? Um, Last week, I think that it recorded and then it just stopped all of a sudden um, going live streaming. So I did end up putting the recording on there. But so hopefully it doesn't do it this this time. So what's up, Wednesday? I am so happy to be here with you every Wednesday in the middle of your week, in the middle of your morning. And I'm not sure why my thing is just going, 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 but I got to tell you, I've done already so much this morning and it is because, uh, let me see if I can stop this other thing from playing because I don't want to see it. Uh, Okay. Anyway, I have packed so much into my morning already today, and that is mainly because I'm going to try to pause this thing because it's running in the background. It's so annoying to me. And it's also making me robotic. So maybe if I do that, it will be a little bit better. I think that might be better. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I've packed so much into this morning already. I have, it's been super foggy. I'm out here in PA in Chester County. It's been super foggy. So I made a point to go to my favorite lake. There's a place called Marsh Creek that's super close to me. And I have taken some really awesome pictures there in the past in the fog where like you see the dock, it goes out and it just looks like it like drops off into outer space because the fog is covering all of the water. So you can't even actually tell that there's water there. You just see like, like basically it looks like clouds. It basically looks like exactly that, like a dock out there in the sky, in the clouds. So it just looks really, I don't know, like magical. I guess that's really the word that I think I would use to describe it. And this morning, I'm going to have to put it in the um, comments. I'll have to send you guys this picture of this gorgeous herring that I saw. And to be quite honest, I never even saw one until about eight years ago when I first moved out to this property. So to see them, it's pretty amazing because they're these just like tall, skinny legged birds, but then they open up their wings and their wingspan is like, almost six feet. It's just amazing. Again, like majestic. But uh, so I got to hang out with this bird this morning (laughs) at Marsh Creek and it was so peaceful. Now the fog wasn't so thick and dense the way that it has been in the past, but the water of course always just looks gorgeous, no matter whether there's clouds reflecting in there or the sunshine, it just doesn't matter. But it was so peaceful and so calm this morning. I think I was out there at like seven, um, maybe a little bit after seven, just because it was daylight already. So I was thinking about something that, you know, we talk a lot about, especially being in podcasting. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of interviews and we think like what makes them so amazing, right? It's the questions that they ask. It's great questions, very powerful questions is what makes everything amazing, right? Whether it's um, a podcast interview or an interview, an actual interview, right? When you're applying for a job, it's the powerful questions that the employer is going to ask you to see if that you're a good fit for their company. But it's also important, I want you you guys to remember this, if you're not entrepreneurs and you do work for somebody or you're unemployed right now and you're getting ready to go out there looking for jobs, make sure you remember that, you know, you too have the ability to ask powerful questions to the employer to make sure that that's a good company that you actually want to be working for. Like find out what they stand for, find out what their, um, what their mission statement is, right? Find out what their core values are of their company. Um, like, you know, what is their, what, what is, what are the core values of their company? What is, um, What's the thing that we have in our, like what their, um, 
what am I trying to say? Like in our office, we have our different um, committees in our office. And one of them um, is our, um, can't even think of it. We'll get back to it because I can't think about it right now. But we have a mission statement. We have all these different things. So I think that's important in your own business. If you're somebody who runs a business to make sure you know what the core values of your business and what they stand for, what your mission statement is. And that really comes from asking yourself, really powerful questions. So I was thinking about this, right? What makes anything a really great conversation is the questions that get asked back and and forth. And what I was thinking about is how do we actually apply this in our own lives, right? We, We have so many thoughts in our brain every day, thousands of thoughts. I think they say like 60,000 thoughts. And most of them are like unconscious. Most of them are just repetitive thoughts that we're just used to thinking, right? Because we've repeated them so many times. But usually, you know, they're they're when you when you're not thinking about it, very often they can be very negative thoughts. They could be like, why am I not good enough? Or why is my boss not like me? Or why don't my kids listen? Or why can't I communicate with my husband or my wife or whoever? Right. We ask ourselves, quite like, why can't I lose this weight or why can't you know, why can't I get healthy? Um, and I think that we don't spend enough time being very intentional with our line of firing questions at ourselves. Right. So I thought about this and all throughout um, my own life, I know I've asked myself lots of terrible questions like, why can't I make any money? Why am I not good enough? Why am I not this? Why am I not that? Why can't I get the right this or that? So I know that I've spent a lot of time in that negative space asking myself terrible questions. And what I found is my brain will always answer me with terrible answers. So in order for me to get really great answers from my brain and tap into my own wisdom in that way, I have to learn how to ask myself really great questions. And so I have a list of questions here that I, I use often, but I haven't looked at them for a while. And I, I like switched gears this morning. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to pull this up and I'm just going to read these questions off at the end of our time today, if you guys want a copy of these questions and answer them for yourselves, you know, don't worry about writing them down right now, but just send me a note, send me a DM and and ask me for them. I know uh, a lot of you reach out to me after an episode that you really like and want like my kind of like my, my show notes before the podcast episode even comes out. So I'm happy to give it to you as always. And I want you guys to ask yourself or really just take a moment to think about these questions, right? So power of questions. What are the results that you want most in your life, right? Like what are the results that I want most in my life? And when I think about that question, I think about all the areas of my life, right? What do I want most in my health? What the, what do I want most in my relationships? What do I want most out of my work or my career or my business? What do I want the most for the people in my life, right? What do I want the most for the children in my life? Um, so ask yourself, what do you want the most in your life? And then dive deep into all these different areas of your life. What are the beliefs that have kept me from getting the results that I really want so far? Like why, like if these are the things that I really want the most, why don't I have some of these results already in my life? Right. What do I believe about my ability to create what I want? That's a really good question because when I think about the things that I want in my life and why haven't I created those things, then it probably makes sense for me to ask myself, like, what am I believing about myself in this area? What am I believing about my ability to create this for myself? Right. What do I need to believe in order to actually create the results that I want to be able to get those results? What do I need to believe? Like, what do I believe currently? Sorry. What do I believe about my ability to create it? What do I need to believe in order to create what I want, the results that I want, right? And then another really good question is, what are maybe some thoughts that are kind of getting in my way? What are some thoughts 
that are getting in my way of creating what I actually want. So if I don't have the results that I'm looking for, like if I think like, what do I really want in my life? Why don't I have that yet? What do I believe about my ability to create that? And what is in my way? What are the thoughts, the limiting beliefs, as we call them, that are keeping me from getting what I want? Like, why don't I believe this yet? Right? Why don't I believe this yet? My ability to create something. Um, I know so many of us constantly talk about the one thing that we think is always in our way, and that's that we don't have enough time right? I don't have time for this. I don't have time to create this new thing. I don't have time to implement one more daily practice into my life. None of that is really true, but that maybe it's a good idea to ask yourself, why would you be even interested in creating more time? If you had more time, if I had more time, what would I spend what would I spend it doing? What would I spend that time on, right? How would I invest in that time, right? And why would that be important to me? There's another good question. Like, if I had more time, here's how I would use that time. Why is that important to me? Or am I willing to learn a new way of doing things, right? Because if we want to create something we have to look at what is what is our thoughts about our ability, and then am I willing to learn, am I willing to take that time that I want to give myself to spend it on doing something, am I willing to actually learn a new way of doing something? And I want you to think about that because if we haven't created it so far, there must be a reason. So am I willing to learn a new way of doing it, especially the ones that I have resistance to, right? Like if I, I'll use an example of my own this year. And that was, um, I wanted to lose weight. I had gained some weight through menopause and, and then I had kind of, I allowed myself to, um, gain the weight. I was like, Oh, I'm just going to, you know, be fine with this. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to, you know, be comfortable with my body. And then I decided in the beginning of this year, not to put pressure on myself. I decided that I wanted to lose weight. And one of the things that I really wanted to do that I didn't believe in my own ability to be able to do it was um, I wanted to intermittent fast. And I kept telling myself that I couldn't do it. Here's the, here's some of these ways that these little things creep up on us. But I kept telling myself that I couldn't do it because I drink, number one, here was one obstacle that I put in front of myself is I'm somebody who goes to the gym at five o'clock in the morning. There's no way that I'm going to be able to not eat until, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon and already be up for seven, you know, eight hours before I finally get to eat something. And there's no way that I want to give up my coffee because I have to have creamer in my coffee. And if I put creamer in my coffee, then I won't be intermittent fasting. So I had made up this belief around there was no way that I could intermittent fast, therefore making it extremely difficult for me to want to lose the weight or be able to lose the weight, my ability to lose the weight. These were the thoughts that were in my way of creating what I wanted, right? And once I decided, wait a minute. Am I willing to learn a new way of doing things, especially the things that I had resistance to like this? So I thought, what is a thought? What is a question I could ask myself that would empower me to give myself a good uh, answer back, right? I needed to figure out what kind of question to ask myself. And my question was, Am I willing, you know, am I willing to do something new? What does that look like? Okay, how can I drink my coffee without creamer in it and enjoy it? And the answer was so obvious. It was just simple. It was like, because I really 
want to intermittent fast. And I'm willing to try coffee without the creamer in it and enjoy it. I'm willing to taste it and and taste it as something new and that it didn't have to be the coffee that I'm used to having. And if I didn't really love it and I didn't want it, I didn't have to have it. I could just switch to black tea because I do enjoy black tea. So I decided I'm just going to have some black coffee today. Just going to have a little bit and see how it is. And then I really was like, that's not so bad. Um, I'm going to have a full cup. And I ended up drinking two and I've never looked back. And I've been intermittent fasting the entire year. And I lost all the weight that I wanted to lose um, by the, it's now we're at the end of the year. I wanted to lose um, 15 pounds, 20 pounds. And I have, I lost 15 and I'm on my way to losing this last few pounds um, here at the end of December. We're in the beginning of December. So I still have the whole month of December to just take my time, continue doing what I'm doing, eating healthy, all the things. So there's my example. Okay. So are you willing to learn new ways of doing things, especially when you have resistance already to it and you're aware? The the key to all of it is to be aware, right? So what is the thing you want to most change in your life? What are you willing to sacrifice to change your life? That's a really good question. The next question is even better. What are you not willing to sacrifice to change your life? Are you not willing to give up the cream and the coffee? Are you not willing to stop at your favorite latte store and get your favorite latte? Are you not willing to go for a walk? and incorporate some new exercise? What are you not willing? Are you not willing to apologize or have difficult conversations in order to improve a relationship? Are you not willing to allow yourself to uh, feel embarrassed or shame and put yourself out there? For instance, on a Facebook Live, just in case you mess up or you start glitching and look funny and people make fun of you and laugh at you, it's possible, but are you willing to do it? Are you willing to take that sacrifice or are you not willing to take that sacrifice? Really good questions. Next question. Let's see. What is it? Would anyone in your life be upset if you changed? I love this question because it has held myself and so many people back, right? Because we think, oh, if I do this thing and I change, I'm going to be different. My relationships might be different. Maybe people won't like it because they don't agree with it, or maybe they don't see themselves doing it, so they don't know why the heck you should do it. I can tell you one relationship, or one one thing that was very significant, it's huge, and it's something that a lot of you know um, about my life. I lost my son 13 years ago. He was 17. And if you're um, a parent, and you have children, you know (laughs) <laughs> most of your friends are now just the parents of your kids' friends, right? That's who your your friend circle becomes more who your kids tell you to be friends with, right? Because if they're friends with somebody, now you, um, you know, want to be friends or associate with the other parents so that you kind of get keep an eye on what's going on with the kids, right? So what I had noticed is when I lost my son, even though he was 17 and, um, you know, we didn't, my girlfriends and I no longer hung out to get together for play dates with kids or birthday parties with the kids, but we had been friends for so many years because my friend, my kid, my son's friends circle was from a uh, childhood. So he had really great friend circle from like kindergarten, even daycare friends, um, kids in the neighborhood that he continued being friends with. So of course me and their mothers were still very good friends. And what I found was my relationships changed drastically, not because my girlfriends, but because of me and how I felt. It was like I lost my son and therefore I didn't have the same things to offer as far as conversation. And that was all in my own mind because my girlfriends still wanted to hang out with me. I just didn't feel as comfortable anymore because 
I had changed in a way, you know, in a big way. Um, but I want you to think about that in the same way. Now, that's not the same thing as what I just said is w- who would be upset if you changed. But there was that's an example of how different things in life do change for us and our um interaction with the other people in our lives that were in our lives before and maybe won't be I mean I know that I very rarely talk to any of my girlfriends from then now um I've moved away and uh we no longer have the same things to talk about so I know that that has changed for me a lot so on a scale I want you to not write this down right now But think about this question. We've only been talking about change and changing our lives and why this is important to us and what would we do and what would we, you know, what do we think about what's in the way on a scale of one to 10, how important is it for you to make changes in your life? Are you like, I am just fine. I know people in my life that are just like, I don't want to change a thing. I'm perfectly happy sitting on the couch, not going anywhere, not doing much of anything. Just going to go to work, come home, plop myself down. Everything's good. I have money to pay the bills and that's good enough for me. I have zero interest in changing anything. Right. So on a scale of one to 10, how important is it for you to make changes in your life? And when I when I'm talking about in your life, I know it sounds very general, but there are many facets to your life, hopefully. Right. There is your personal life, the life that just only has to do with you. And there's a few different areas that only have to do with you. Your physical health only has to do with you. It doesn't require anybody else. Your mental health only requires you, no one else. Your emotional health, like how well do you manage this? Because this can be a hot mess sometimes. I know it had been for me for many years until I finally just got tired of not having control over my own emotions. My own life depended on all of my emotions because I was very reactive all the time. It was just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And today, with everything that's going on in the world, as it always has been, we always seem to think that there's so much going on today than there was yesterday, but that's actually not true. There's always been things going on. They just change. They just change. This, this is not going on anymore. Now this is going on. It's like, we're like, oh my God, Corona. Did we forget about anthrax? Just saying. So on a scale of one to 10, how important is it for you to make changes in your life, in the different areas of your life, right? What will happen if you don't change? That's so important to know, right? Kind of like, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you not willing to sacrifice? How important is it for you to change? And what would happen if you didn't change? If nothing changed and you just became Mr. or Mrs. Oozebottoms sitting on your ass all the time on the couch, binge watching Netflix, with a bucket of popcorn or ice cream or whatever your choice of snacks is, and you just lived out your life exactly the way you're doing right now, what will it end up costing you? Not financially, maybe financially, but the real value, which isn't money. Like what will it end up costing you, right? You either make time to take care of your physical health now, or you will have no choice but to take time to take care of your physical illness. Let me say that again. You either make time now to take care of your physical health, or you have no choice but to take time out to take care of your physical illness. Same thing with mental and emotional health, right? They all they all are the same. Same thing with eating properly, which contributes to your physical and mental and emotional health, right? You either spend some extra money now on eating better foods, or again, you choose to spend money now on better food, or you have no choice but to spend money on prescription pills. Hand in hand, the same. It's just the same money. It's just a matter of you're choosing it here ahead of time, or you have no choice over here 
And over here, it'd be worse because you'd be older. Just saying. So what will happen if you don't change and what will it cost you? What is the most upsetting issue pressing on you right now? Every part of our era, our, every area of our life probably isn't perfect. Maybe some areas are like, that's amazing. Over here, not so much, <laughs> right? I have osteoarthritis. I can tell you that like five years ago, in pain all the time. Now, I love my body. I have treated myself well with nutrition and health and exercise. And I, my goal is to be in a pain-free body. And I have that most of the time. I still feel it but I'm still working on it and I will never stop working on it. So what is the most pressing, uh, what is the most upsetting issue pressing on you right now? Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe your kids aren't listening to you. Maybe you're going through a divorce. We all go through different things, right? We, we, we don't feel in control of all of our areas. What do you fear about this particular situation? How are you currently managing your stress around it? How much joy do you currently create in your life? That's so important because I think we don't think that we're in charge of creating our own happiness and joy, right? But we are because I can tell you right now, one of the things that I used to do, and I think, I don't even know if anybody really knows about it. I think I just was talking to my father about it recently, but I told my dad, you know, when I first lost my son and I was just in constant devastation and constant um, depression and crying all the time on purpose, intentionally, I used to open up the YouTube and I would watch babies laughing. Swear to God, true story. Watching babies laughing, you can't help but be cheered up. You can't help but laugh and bring some love and, and happiness and joy into your heart. And I used to do that on purpose. So ask yourself, like, what are you doing right now to create that joy, especially if there's a situation that you fear about or that you're currently stressed and depressed about or is upsetting that's pressing on you, right? Um, what gives you what gives your life meaning, like true meaning? What part of your life really gives you that true meaning? And is that the part of your life that's actually creating some unhappiness for you right now? Because if so, that's your first priority. Do you believe you are living the life you are meant to live? Most of us probably say no to this. Now, if you're somebody who just answered yes immediately, why the heck are you not out there sharing that with the world on how we get this? Because I would like to know, right? Are you living your best life right now, the way that you are meant to live it? And what do you want other people to know about you? I think that's a super important question. And I'm really glad that we're wrapped up with that question because, you know, I want you all to know about me that I have spent many, many, many years people pleasing and being a bully to myself and being reactive and, you know, thinking everything's happening to me and why is this all happening to me? And I, I'm not doing it right. And I'm breaking all the rules and I'm going against the grain and all of these things. But the truth is, I want you to know this about me. I have gone through breaking all the rules because I thought the rules, I thought they were, I thought somebody else was in charge of the rules. Today, what I want you to know about me is I make my own rules for me and I live by my own rules because they're the only rules that count outside of authority, not saying authority isn't important to follow, right? Gosh knows I've broken the authority rules. Um, and, you know, they locked my ass up. But now here I am broken free from everybody else's rules and living by my own rules. You know, you go from like rule breaker to like a legal, legit badass. That's what I've done for me. So that is what I want you guys to know about me. If you want to know how to do that, call me, DM me, get these list of questions, answer them. You don't have to share them with the world the way I do, but answer them for yourself. Share them with you because they are super powerful questions. And if you want more and more and more, I will always give you more questions. So 
Thank you guys for spending yet another Wednesday with me. And by the way, next week, we're going to have a awesome guest. Her name is Denise Farrell. Actually, she's married. So it's Denise Nicola, but she is a human connection coach. So I love that because she connects us all with our heart because that is how we're connected. Can't wait to have that conversation with Denise. Um, To all of you guys, love you so much. We're in our last month of 2022. Let's make it so strong. Don't make it about gift buying. Make it about gifting and being generous with your heart and with your time and with your love. Those are the greatest gifts. Love you guys. Have an amazing rest of your week. Thank you for listening to Unpacking Brain Drama Podcast. You'll find links for all the things mentioned below in the show notes. And it would be incredibly awesome if you would take a quick moment to leave a review on iTunes or wherever you listen. If you'd like to be considered as a guest on our podcast, be sure to go to www.resultsbydesigncoaching.com for a free 30-minute coaching session. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time.